uh, welcome back to my channel uh, so we're still continuing our tutorial series on GNU radio and in this tutorial uh, we're gonna look at a digital modulation scheme and this type of modulation schemes that we want to look at is known as PSK and we're gonna look at different flavors of PSK how we can generate these uh, modulation schemes and the easy, I I found an easiest way uh, to generate these modulation schemes so I'm share, I'm gonna share with you uh, my past tutorials were based on analog modulation schemes which include AM and FM because these are the two modulation schemes which are very popular uh, in an analog modulation schemes uh, so we looked at the modulator demodulator of AM and then FM we looked at the different scenarios of FM using software defined radios like uh, um, uh, USRP then we looked at it through spectrum uh, function generator and then looked at the signal in time domain oscilloscopes and things like that uh, so we want to look at PSK before we move on to PSK I want to make it as brief as possible without like boring you guys so just quickly look at it uh, let's look at the Wikipedia page what is actually phase shift keying basically what phase shift keying is doing is this that instead of converting it instead of having change in your frequency now you're gonna change it in terms of phase alright so the change will occur based on the number of phases now if you were to look at this in a form of a circle alright just just look at it in a form of a circle like this let's look at this diagram how many phases I can have here I can have 360 phases isn't it on this circle on this circle but each going to have an amplitude of one isn't it so the horizontal axis we're calling it i for in phase and q the vertical axis we are calling it quadrature all right so that's the idea behind basic idea so now if i want to what are the maximum phases i can have the maximum phases that i can have on this circle is going to be 360 all right so 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 the the number of point on the circle can be 360 but using modulation schemes like PSK if I'm using PSK then if I'm using a single bit to represent uh, to, to, if, if I'm using single bit how many states I can have that's the question I'm asking myself if I'm using a single bit how many state I can have so here in BPSK or we call it PSK we're saying okay using one bit I can have two states okay why because two raised to one would give me two isn't it two raised to one give me two so that two will define how many of these points are going to be there on that circle or we call it in a constellation diagram we call this a constellation diagram why because as the phases increases we like to use constellation diagram because in order for me to make it in a form of a a sinusoidal wave that would become tedious like for example let's have a look at this so right now this is an example of a PSK signal wherever I have one I'm gonna keep this as is but whenever I'll, I'll encounter zero I'll have a change in phase then whenever so it will go on and go on whenever I encounter one it will have a change in phase all right so we're changing a phase and for PSK the change of phase is from 0 and 180 degrees all right so if I were to draw this diagram so I can either choose for 0 to remain as is whenever I encounter on my bit stream number of zeros I will keep that as is when I encounter 180 uh, when I encounter bit 1 I'll change that wherever the phase of that signal was I will change that I will flip it 180 degrees that's the idea now now as the bit increases so right now we're using single bit for transition let's say you want to pack more bits in that time period you want to instead of using just one bit now you're gonna use two bits so in order for me to use two bits so two raised to two two raised to two would give me four states now in order for me to do four states now I can choose then I'll have a diagram which looks something like this so whenever I'll encounter zero zero in my zero zero I'll have a phase of this 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 looks something like uh, 315 degrees I will have a phase of 315 degrees I'll keep adding 90 degrees to it and I'll get different phases 
so far so good then if i use three bits to represent this diagram so every so how many two raised to three would give me eight points on this circle this is what we're going to explore uh, using our our, our GNU radio diagram um, i hope you understood the basic idea so i'm using a random source uh, which uh, is from zero so i'm just basically showing it has only two states and number of samples which are coming out uh, is 100, 100 samples uh, as you can see this is representing byte as you, this this purple is for byte you can go and check and see if that byte is there go to help and type and you can see this is for byte all right so this byte is going into a psk modulator right here and the cool thing about this psk modulator is this uh, you need a couple of things first thing the cool thing about this psk modulator is is it's available in the radio block number of constellation points what do i mean by number of constellation point that you see here that means how many points are going to be there how many points are going to be there on the circle if there are going to be eight points on the circle which means it's 8 PSK, that means I would use 3 bit to represent that point. All right, so if I have a bit stream of, let's say, lots of zeros and ones, I'm going to pick up 3 bits at a time, and I'm going to map and see, sort of like a lookup table. So let's say if it's 0, 0, 001, that 0, 0, 001 should map to this phase. So this is where my, my change will occur in terms of phase. This is how I'm modulating using a modulation key. If I have a four points, four points, which means if I if I have four points in my constellation diagram, that we are calling it QPSK. That is known as quadrature phase shift king because I have four points. If it's going to be eight PSK, then I'll have eight points on this diagram. If it's 16 PSK, then I'll have 16 points on my diagram. So if you were to look at this example, this is Another example, if you were to totally count this point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is 8 PSK. And then you can have higher order modulation schemes like 8 PSK. As you can clearly see, in order for you to represent 8 points, now you need 3 bits. So for 16 uh, for 16 PSK then for 32 PSK and things like that. So basically the in-phase value for all of these uh, points, the phase will be different, but the magnitude is going to be same. The magnitude for this is, let's just say one. So this, the magnitude, the I value for all of this is going to be one, but the phase value is changing. So hence, you're actually plotting, you're picking up the points from the circle, which phase you wanna use. So this is being done here uh, using PSK modulator. Um, uh, you're going to leave all the defaults value as is. I'm using two samples per symbol uh, so I can get a clear diagram on my constellation diagram so it would be much clearer. If you use higher sample rate, uh, you, you get a very cluttery diagram. Uh, I have my word ross on so I can see how many bits per sample that I'm packing in. Uh, and the, this is the RRC, uh, so let's just leave everything as default. The next step is I'm just simply adding it. I'm using an adder. Why am I using an adder? Because I am trying to add a noise source and I want to show you that if there is noise in my system, how it will corrupt those uh, points on your constellation diagram. It's going to my throttle block and then I'm looking at this in terms of a frequency sync and a constellation sync. Next step is this. Um, I'm also looking at what is coming out, what, what is the random source, what type of a, a signal that is coming out from a random source. So this is byte. I want to look at it in my GUI time sync. And that's why I need to convert that using a block called U unsigned character to float. That will convert into float and then from float to, uh, uh, to, to complex number so I can see it in, on my time sync. That's all it is. I have experimented with three different sources, vector source, Galo, and linear feedback shift source. It doesn't matter, you can use any of them. The reason, the, the, the main purpose of this to show you what I'm saying in theory that you can have four points, eight points, 16 points, and so on. And I wanna show you the effect of noise. Uh, so whenever there is a lot of noise, um, what kind of a effect it will have on my constellation diagram. 
So let me just simply run this flow graph. Once I run this flow graph, check this out. So this is basically just showing me what is coming out from that source uh, right here. This is this. So I'm just simply visualizing whatever is coming out from my random source. Next step I want to look at, uh, since it's in a form of a square wave, I mean, I can smooth it out by, by having a repeat signal, uh, repeat that uh, sample again. But I just wanted to show you, since it's not purely sinusoid, this is how, why you're getting this spectrum like this. Now, if you were to look at it, how many, how many points are there? Ignore these four points. These are just some other points which are there. Uh, so one, two, three, four. So my constellation diagram has how many points? Four points. So in order for me to represent four points, so two raised to one would give me two points on my constellation diagram. Two raised to two would give me four points, which means in each transaction, I am packing two bits. I start adding more bits. So I'm increasing sort of like a, um, I start packing more things in a single time period of, of, of my waveform. So it's four points, so that's good. Now, let's, let's increase the number of points. Okay, let me just stop this flow graph, all right? And let me go to the next level, two raised to three bits. So two raised to three bits would give me eight points on my constellation diagram. So that's why I've chosen this to be eight. So eight is becoming your QPSK, which is becoming a higher modulation scheme. Now let's look at the effect of this. Once I run this graph, all right, check this out. All right, so let me just, just put it like this so you can clearly see. Now you can see the dominant one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight points on my constellation diagram. All right, so now if I in start introducing noise into my channel, now look what happened in this higher modulation schemes. You know what? Let me just. Uh, I don't need none of this. So let me just uh, disable these. Let me enable this. Everything is enabled. Let me just disable this. So I can just only see this. Uh, let me just disable these blocks. So we're good. And let me just disable my frequency sync as well. So let's just quickly look at it. All right, what's going on? There's this, this, this. Uh, okay, why there's an error. Now, let's run this flow graph and then quickly look at something. Else. Okay, so eight points. So now, let's, when I start increasing noise a little bit, look, these start getting corrupted. Okay. So as you can see, when I in start increasing my noise, so using my noise parameter, basically I'm trying to introduce like channel impairments. Uh, so, so you can clearly see I'm not making much sense of my constellation diagram. It's not much clearer as compared to when there is no noise in my signal. So, so I'm going towards my higher modulation schemes, which means my point is getting closer and closer. Now check this out when I use 16 points, which means now I'm using four bits to represent 16 points. So 16 points, the points are going to be much closer now and they are more susceptible to noises in my channel. So these are, look at the just dominant point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. These are the 16 points. Let's just introduce noise. As soon as I start introducing noise, the signals tend to get corrupted quickly as compared to when I have, when I'm using a lower order modulation scheme. Now that's the issue. So in 5G and in 6G communication and 5G and beyond systems, they are going to use these higher modulation schemes, but problem with higher modulation schemes as we can clearly see that they get corrupted because the points are much closer all right you can also use QAM but QAM will so everything will have a magnitude of one but they will all have different phases in in PSK but in QAM you I can also use this space in my constellation diagram as well but what they are suggesting now and what they have suggested and what is being implemented in terms of modulation schemes that for lower for 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 
for a communication device that is much closer to a base station, you're going to use higher modulation schemes. And for a, for a device, for a communication device like your mobile phone, if it's further away from your base station, you're going to use higher modulation scheme. Oh, sorry, lower modulation scheme. Lower modulation schemes mean less point on my constellation diagram. Higher modulation, higher order modulation schemes mean more points. Why? Because when I use higher modulation scheme like 16 PSK and so on, my I am packing more bits in that same time duration. While when you're away from a base station, you're using a lower order modulation schemes, which means your points are much further in constellation diagram, and they tends to they 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 they, they will not get corrupted because of the distance because of that wireless transmission. So that's the idea behind adaptive modulation and encoding schemes, and and that's the main purpose of it. Um, so so I hope uh, you like this tutorial on on uh, on uh, higher on uh, phase shift keying and higher modulation schemes. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.